Hello and welcome to another Royal Society Publishing video podcast. Today we're talking about hydrophilic channels and charge transfer. I'm with Peter Rich from UCL who recently authored a review on this subject for Interface. Peter, this is the first headline review for our series on charge dynamics. Can you tell us about your area of research and how it fits into this theme? Yeah, well, my major area of research concerns um, biological electron transfer and in particular the enzymes that constitute what we call our respiratory chain. These are large complicated enzymes embedded in a membrane and their function is to transfer electrons uh, from essentially coming from food that we eat to oxygen which is then consumed and in doing so when these electrons move through these complicated proteins, they pump charged protons across the membrane in which they're sitting. And this forms an electrochemical gradient, which is then used to make ATP, which is the energy source that our cells require to survive and function. So there's lots of intricate types of charge transfer processes involved, uh, which then fit into the theme of this series. What's the main thrust of your contribution and how does it fit into the series? The reason I've written this article is to review the types of ideas that there are on specifically how protons can move through complicated proteins in response to electron movements. So this is integral to the types of enzymes that we study in the respiratory chain. And I wrote the article first of all to review the, the types of structures that we see in proteins that, that are thought to be able to transport protons and also to review a rather controversial area using one specific enzyme, the enzyme that consumes oxygen in us, where there's actually um, quite a bit of controversy at the present time as to which channels and which structures are responsible for which actions to do with this proton transfer type process which is occurring. So it's a review and it's a, uh, a hypothesis as, as to um, what types of functions these structures could be performing. So in your review you mentioned two types of channels, proton channels and dielectric channels. Can you tell us about the main similarities and differences between the two? So yes, yeah, so this is a very basic idea. We're, we're, all of us in the field are still trying to understand the details of how protons can move through proteins and how different structures have evolved in order to be able to do this. In the specific example that I use which is called cytochrome oxidase which is the, the main focus of this review there are several such channels which could be moving protons and the field is rather in a controversial state at the moment as to which of these structures is doing what. What I'm proposing is that some of these structures are indeed acting as proton channels. In other words, they're, they're acting as the conduits for protons to, move, to be moved through the protein from one side to the other. But the other structures that look like proton channels may not actually be serving that function, but serving a different function, which I've called a dielectric channel, which, whose function is to allow charges to to move through deeply buried structures in proteins, especially these membrane proteins that, that I work on. And that these types of channels, although they may superficially, structurally look like proton channels, are not functioning in that way. Rather, they're distorting the components in them as an electron moves through a component, and then they distort back once the electron moves on. And so what I've proposed is that with this balance of these two types of function, we might be able to make a more coherent uh, uh, understanding of the complicated mechanism that some of these proteins are fulfilling and hopefully at least address the controversies which are out there at the moment. Can you elaborate on some of the controversies that you mentioned? Well, if I just give you one example, we have an enzyme in us, cytochrome oxidase, which is the one responsible for consuming most of the oxygen that we breathe. And this couples electron transfer to, to proton movement across the membrane. It's a crucial enzyme for our conservation of energy from food. 
There are enzymes in bacteria which are almost identical in the core structure to our enzyme. And yet, in the bacterial studies that have been done of, the, of those enzymes, one particular hydrophilic channel has been highlighted as being the most likely one to, to be the proton transferring structure. Alternatively, in the mammalian form of the enzyme, including ours, there are quite a few studies which suggest that a different channel is performing this function. And it's led to the idea that there might, might actually be a different mechanism in our enzyme compared to the very similar bacterial enzymes, which is an interesting idea. What I'm suggesting is that actually maybe these enzymes are all working the same way if we consider dielectric functions for some of the channels and proton transferring functions for other structures and that what is actually proposed in this article is there may be a similar mechanism that can be formulated for all of these enzymes if we take these two functions into account rather than just focusing on the one type of function. In the laboratory, how do you distinguish between different types of channels and their structure and properties? Well, in, in the area, there's been a fantastic advances mainly through X-ray crystallography of, uh, of understanding what the atomic structures of these very large proteins are, of these different proteins. And so we can identify likely types of structures within these proteins that might be serving one or both of these functions that I'm discussing. But then, of course, we have to test that experimentally. So as, as, I, as I see it at the moment, there are several ways to do this. So we can go in with biophysical methods and specifically by spectroscopic means actually monitor protons moving from one type of group to another or an electron moving from one type of group to another and we can combine that with molecular biology to start knocking out different components of the chains and see what types of functions that they uh, uh, might be doing on that basis. Another approach might be with the huge advances in um, quantum mechanical calculations that can now be, begin to be applied successfully to very large proteins, these might be able to address the issue of whether, for example, a hydrophilic st structure could act as a proton channel or have another type of function. And then finally, there may be new types of physical methods by which we can type try to actually assess the, the relevant physical properties of those parts of the proteins that we think might be carrying out these different types of functions. So this would be a more physical type of approach. So I think with these three different types of approaches um, through different labs, different expertise, these questions can be addressed in, in several ways. Thank you very much and thank you for watching.